I'm Brian Leonard. And uh, just sort of level set a little bit, uh, curious, how many people have used React Native? Woo, React. No. Uh, so React Native is React, but uh, on a phone, usually, iOS or Android. Uh, but not through the browser, like native style. And so we recently really released a React Native app uh, written, you know, 90%, 95% in JavaScript, and you literally cannot tell the difference. It's really, it's really cool. So how many of you use React Web? Woo, Web. Cool. So React Web and React Native work together very similar. And the reason something like uh, React DOM exists now, uh, like he was talking about, and he rewrote evidently to stream, which is, you know, it's pretty hardcore, uh, is, that, is that separation. So when you're already rendering to that shadow DOM, then you have to do some sort of awesome magic that I don't quite understand to put it in a real DOM. You could do even slightly more awesome magic and put it dynamically make uh, UI views in Objective-C. And, and that's how React Native works. Anyway, it's super cool, uh, and I think you should all try it out. I think it's, I think it's the new way to make mobile applications. But uh, we're going to show everything uh, that we've been working on. And the first thing we did, coming from a Rails environment where we're really really into testing is look for how we're going to test that thing. And I just didn't find anything out there. Uh, so we made all this stuff up. And uh, yeah, I, ho I hope other people find it useful. Um, with TaskRabbit, uh, we're a website and mobile app, of course, uh, to get stuff done, normal everyday stuff. You know, go to IKEA, bring it back, put it together, put up some shelves, whatever crazy other thing you got going on in your life. Uh, we've got a bunch of people we've uh, checked that they're good at those things. Uh, you know, it won't hurt you. It's also a plus. Uh, and uh, in that order, I guess, you know, if, if, if he puts up my shelf, you know, and attacks me, you know, at least the shelf is up. That's, that's what I say. But no, they are safe uh, background check people that are, that are good at that thing. Uh, you get your stuff done, and, you know, we also have taskers making enough money to pay rent even around here. Um, you know, on the platform, they're being, running their own business. They have an app all to themselves. There's an app that they, you know, receive work on. They can sort of say what they want to do. They set their schedules. They draw a map, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. And, and that is the app that we decided to rewrite uh, in React Native. I thought this was a good candidate because, like, we have these 30,000 taskers. And, like, I, guess, I mean, that's not a few people, but that's also not on the App Store, right? And so if React Native turned, to have, turned out not to be able to produce the absolute most fluid UI or, or something like that, then it wouldn't be the biggest deal. And we have to make it for both Android and iOS, uh, so like, we're able to share the co all that JS code and stuff like that, and so it was a really, re made us really efficient. And we could tolerate some of those issues. Uh, we haven't found those performance things, so it's going really well. So we rewrote this app uh, in React Native. We'll talk a little bit about how we're testing it. Uh, there's three kinds of testing you might talk about with any kind of anything, I guess, but you know, any kind of React and especially in, in React Native. Uh, one of them is unit testing. Uh, so maybe you have some pure JavaScript library or something like that. We have like a routing library, some date functions, you know, something like that. Uh, we're testing those in Mocha, much like a Node.js project. Uh, you know, just running those classes through the paces in the unit tests. Anyone use Mocha? Mocha? Something else? Jasmine? Oh, that one hurts. Uh, you, know, you know you're in trouble when you say a technology and someone says, no! <laughs> anyway, uh, the component testing uh, would be sort of what they talked about uh, in the first one, the first thing, like it's really great to test React components because you just throw a certain set of props at it, a certain state at it, and then just see what comes out. Uh, you could even do that on the server now that I think about it and just check that the whole thing equals this one big string. Uh, and the last is integration tests. Uh, people doing maybe like Selenium tests or something like that. Anyone do that? Capybara, something like that. Um, that's sort of what we talk about integration tests, like as close as possible that you can get to what the customer, you know, the user of the site is actually doing. And that's the one we're going to talk about tonight. 
Uh, I think that's the first one you should, at least I would say you should start with. Like, if you're going to test anything, sort of just testing the whole thing doesn't crash on load uh, is, sort of, is sort of my theory. Like, I've seen things with really good unit tests, but then the whole thing doesn't work at all. Uh, but you mocked it to the test path, but you know. <laughs> the integration test is the key, and so I think that's the real uh, important one to, to look at. And I wanted to publish how we do things, uh, some of the things we were learning as we're you know, super early in the React Native community, uh, but didn't want to publish the whole app, because that's not good. Uh, so we made this sample app. Uh, we have a blog post several blog posts that I'll show at the end, uh, and, and a lot of them all talk and work on this, this sample app. It's sort of a Twitter, Tumblr sort of thing. Like, you have posts, you make posts. They can be longer than these words. This might be a, a very bad example. Uh, and you can follow people, and you can see their posts and things like that. Uh, just some example to show how we're doing things. Uh, the first blog post was on routing, coming from a web background, we found it really useful that each of these things, each of the screens on an app uh, is really like a URL. And you can totally recreate the state needed for those React components based on the, just the stuff in the URL. Uh, and it's really coming to handy. So I, you know, check that out if, if you get a time. So we wrote a bunch of tests for it. And it kind of looks like this. I cheat, so I just recorded a GIF. Uh, good thing is it turns out we don't have internet. but. It, uh, you know, you sort of run the test, and it just, just robots the shit out of this thing, right? It's just like, hey, simulator, let's type some things, and let's log in, and let's do things, boop, 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 boop. And, uh, oh, let's see who this guy follows. Oh, he follows this guy. Oh, he posted this guy. Click on that. Make sure that it has some text on it, and then do something else. And it just, you know, just keeps going. Uh, it's kind of slow, and that's kind of how integrations work. But you know, I say slow tests are better than no tests. <laughs> TM, people. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's, that's sort of what we're building here. Now I'll talk a little bit about how it works. Forever. All right, cool. All right, so we're running Mocha to do the integration test as well. I really like Mocha. And another thing I really like about JS coming from Ruby is that it does multi-threaded stuff really well. And so the tests start up, and I just start launching processes like a beast, man. I, just, I start up the packager, which is this thing that allows us so we don't have to compile the JavaScript. I start up my own, like, Koa. Anyone use Koa? Kind of like an express kind of thing. Uh, launches that, and I launch the simulator, which uses Appium. Appium is, implements uh, what they call the Selenium wire protocol. And so if you've written Selenium tests, it's, it's like those go over HTTP. But they put, instead of a server being on the other side, they put the simulator on the other side. More magic I don't quite understand. But you basically write the same tests that you write for the web and click on things and find things, except you're not finding things and clicking on DOM things. You're clicking on crazy simulator things. And it works, and it's awesome. So we launched that on one port. We launched the other thing on another port. And the iOS app knows that it's running in test modes and will look at those ports when it needs to talk to the server to look at 3001, when it needs to talk to the simu when the test needs to talk to the simulator, it'll talk to it on this other port. So they we sort of like synchronize things, and they both come back and they say they're started. Now, we don't want to depend on the server, like the real server, or certainly not the production server. Uh, there'd be a lot of curse words on my production site, because most of my tests say things. Um, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to depend on this fake server that always returns the kind of things we're testing. So the first thing the test is going to do is to say, if someone fetches slash account, return this stuff. And if someone post to this other thing, return this. And if, if you get a URL you haven't heard of, just freak out. Another thing it's going to do, sort of strangely, but hopefully we'll get to it, is tell the server where, what screen, what URL the app should start on, and then what other things it's doing. 
talk about that in a second. All right, then we go over here. And if, I don't know if you noticed in the, in the example, there was like this red bar on the top. Because we have to tell, every test should start from a known spot. Uh, if you're running node tests or something like that, you like use tr uh, transactions or clear out the database in some way so that it's always in a known state. We want to do that on the simulator, but we didn't know how. And so we, we, we don't know how to mess with the simulator. So I put this little button up at the top, and you click on that, and it sends a message down to delete all its documents and clear out its database and sort of log itself out and all this other stuff. So it deletes all the local files, and then they, you know, returns back and gets deleted. Next, we click on, you click on that reset text button. It also, it asks the server. So now the simulator knows about your crazy server too, and say, hey, what should I do? And the server returns the URL uh, that it should, like basically which screen it's testing, so we can, it already takes forever. There's no reason to log in each time and all this other business, right? And so it go right to the screen under test, uh, and and also it executes actions. Uh, anyone using something like Flux and whatnot, it might be familiar with like the dispatcher and all that other stuff. One thing we found that was really cool with using dispatchers and tests, like having dispatchers when we want to test it, is that we can just like super fast forward into the world, right? And so in our app, you log in, we give that to something called like auth actions or something. That'll talk to the, the server and say, hey, is this a good like, username and password? And then if that works, it'll dispatch this action called like, user logged in. Like, we can skip all that server crap if we just like, somehow trigger this user login thing. And so that's one example of a dispatcher thing that like, the simulator will ask the server and say, hey, anything I should do before we get going here? And it's like, yeah, you know dispatch a little server login action, and it does. Uh, so now the user, it automatically gets logged in without taking the extra time to actually do such a thing. All right, cool. So then you're like, all right, now the test is going for real. We're going to click on the Add Post button. It's going to find and click the button. Done. We're going to say, we're going to assert that the screen should say we should be on the new post screen. It's going to look for the test and say it's there or keep going. It's going to fill in the text and submit. Uh, which is going to post to their fake server. The server is going to be like, hey, that's what I was just what I was looking for. Here's, here's what we stubbed out. So then the task is posted. Task, sorry, I do that a lot. The uh, post is posted. That doesn't work as well. The post is posted. Uh, and now I should be on the dashboard and see a new post. Like, yeah, it's actually there, and it worked. Uh, that code looks a little something like this. Uh, we're stubbing out... Uh, you know, our dashboard basically, our posts. We should expect a post to post. God, I had the worst names in the world. We should expect a post call to the post endpoint so we can recreate a post and then you can, I don't know, post something. Uh, and then we're going to uh, log in, and, uh, which triggers that action and launch the driver. We're going to check for all that stuff and uh, it's going to pass. All that looks like this basically. Magic login, click the plus sign, type out the words, hit submit, assert that something is there, assert the new post is there, and done. So that worked. Uh, so then, what do you do? So that's how you do a test. Next, you do that a shit ton of times, like a lot. And then over and over again, all the features you add and so now your, your whole suite takes like four hours to run, but no tests are better than, slow tests are better than no tests. I just made that up in this talk, so I can't, I haven't got it down yet to, you know, tr Trump has all his lines and whatnot. I'm still working, I'm still working on mine. All right, so you do that a bunch of times. Then, and because it takes freaking four hours to run, uh, you set it up to run automatically on something like Travis, uh, Sauce is really good that runs these uh, Selenium tests and this Appium stuff. And then you paralyze it so that you can get it down to a reasonable amount of time. And then you keep it green. If it goes red, what do you do? You fix it. And then you win because your users don't have crap that crashes. 
And ideally, I guess there is another step. Ideally, somehow you're doing something that gets you to profit. And uh, yeah, that's it. All of these have blog posts up on uh, tech.taskrabbit.com. We're hiring uh, React people and Ruby people. And uh, I'm on the Twitters. Thank you. That was great.